welcome to a lecture of inspection and measurement solutions by Dr. Schenk. So my name is Thomas Laumeyer and I'm working here for Dr. Schenk since 2001. And uh, Dr. Schenk is a company working for inspection and measurement. And within the project Clean for Yield, we had a big part in one of these uh, EU-founded um, project to be a part of um, this one, especially for inspection. And my part is now to explain what does inspection means today. So, for the Clean for Yield project, let me just introduce a little bit. It's a it's a working together of different companies to uh, for the project Clean for Yield, which means we are increasing the production yield by producing products on a roll-to-roll -roll process. And uh, this roll-to-roll -roll process are mainly a matter of production process, but also to detect something which is within that process not working correctly, so make a process optimization by detection. Um, to clean the material for cleaning and uh, to, to detect if there are uh, some particles remaining on the clean material to prevent something and to make a repair. So the Clean for Yield project is a matter of prevention, repairing, cleaning and detection. And the Dr. Schenk part is a matter of detection. So uh, Clean for Yield means we uh, see Products are produced in a large area processing at a high speed. So it's a row to roll continuous process, production process of innovative thin film devices, which means OPVs, so organic photovoltaic modules, or OLEDs in a, on a flexible substrate. Yeah. Target of the project is to increase the yield of this production process, to reduce the production costs, and to improve say performance and operational devices lifetimes. So this is the goal on it. And uh, as just mentioned, detection and inspection during that production process is a matter of Dr. Schenk. All the other companies who are uh, working together are a matter of cleaning, prevention of defects and repair defects during set production processes. So Dr. Schenk is a uh, worldwide um, company. The headquarter is located nearby Munich here and we have a lot of representatives in all over the world. And uh, some main local offices of Dr. Schenk, one uh, in the US and uh, uh, several ones in the Asian areas in Shanghai, Beijing, Hong Kong, Taiwan and Korea because uh, these are big global producers and um, in the small countries we are working with small representatives like in France or Spain here in Europe. Dr. Schenk is uh, founded 1985, a privately owned company and is working since 30 years now uh, for camera-based inspection systems and one of the experts for AOI which means automatic optical inspection solutions. Um, more than 250 people are working here at the headquarter and uh, Dr. Schenk has uh, installed worldwide roughly 12,500 systems to inspect something. And this is not only roll to roll, this is also glass or optical discs, all things which are flat substrates can be inspected. So the Dr. Schenk is divided in several um, uh, areas of um, production. So one of one of inspection tasks is a web inspection. This is a matter of uh, also for the clean for yield. So web inspection means it's a continuous production process, and we are looking for local defects and material properties during this production processes can be plastic films, foils, non-wovens, textiles, papers, many more. All these products which are produced continuously, starting with a low speed of production like 5 or 10 meters per minute, but can go up to 500 meters per minute, 1000 meters per minute at the production speed. 
Yeah, and uh, the next one is uh, um, the solar inspection. So here we are inspecting the surfaces, the substrates, coated substrates for solar panels, mainly in the synfilm solar market. So, uh, uh, additionally, we are doing a lot of glass inspection to inspect glasses from the TFT glass, 0.3, 0.5 millimeter thick, up to float glass or laminated glass with a thickness of 25, 30 millimeters. And at least in the past, we have done a lot of stuff during inspection of optical medias and also some special customized solutions for um, special applications in the semiconductor industries. So you see, at least uh, clean for yield is a project which is covering one, two, three applications at Dr. Sheng. So the web inspection, because clean for yield is a roll to roll process. The solar inspection, because clean for yield is working in the organic photovoltaic industry. And the glass inspection, because we are searching on these uh, surfaces of the continuous material for particles, which is often a matter of glass inspection. So um, for that reason, clean for yield fits perfectly in the uh, development production processes of Dr. Schenk because we have a lot of engineering experience in that different applications. So for inspection, why do you need inspection? So it's a matter of inspection is a matter of two main things. One is the quality control to inspect the quality of a product or to inspect the quality of an incoming product before it is processed and the next step is um, to inspect the production processes, to control the, the production processes by inspection of the material which is processed. For example, if you have a coating process and you're inspecting after that coating, you can see if the coating process works perfect, yes or no. If we find some coating defects on the material, you can immediately react and you can improve your coating process to get a better product, so to increase the yield. So inspection is a matter of production to optimize processes to increase the yield, as it is called also clean for yield, to reduce the costs and to improve the quality of your product. With the goal to have a customer satisfaction and to decrease the recalls to increase the quality rating and your delivery reliability. But also, it's a matter today, it's a matter of environmental reasons to introduce an inspection system because if you are increasing your yield, you are decreasing your waste, so you are avoiding material which has to be, which, which is waste and has to be disposed. So this is the reason why inspection is needed mainly quality control means to find defects on a continuous or on a sheet material and to find critical defects and to sort out that part of the material not to be shipped to the customer. So quality control allows you to establish quality standards and to mark critical defects on the inspected material or to give alarm if critical defects are detected. Next one is the process control. Process control means if you have, for example, a laminating and, and or a coating process, the inspection comes afterward and a defect is detected on the material and you see immediately, okay, I got a laminating defect or I got a coating defect and so I can immediately react and improve my laminating or my coating process to avoid a worse material. So process control means inspection helps you to improve the yield by quickly identifying a source of defects and to fix the problem right away. Automatic inspection starts always with why we cannot use only some operators looking on a material. So, we have to start with the manual inspection. So that means somewhere in your production process, an operator is moving the produced material during production and is checking for the quality. 
So this is a possibility. A possibility that the operators are checking the product produce quality continuously during the process. The, there are some limiting factors which has the company to know to avoid um, that the operators uh, the operators are never can never detect everything. And so we have here added some slides explaining the limits of manual inspection. And here that one is one of the tasks to see if we have a defect, let me say a crack, with a certain length, which starts at zero millimeter at the left hand side and goes up to one millimeter on the right hand side X scale. So if we have cracks on a material and the operators are manually inspect this material for cracks, so smaller, so tinier the crack is, so less is the probability to be detected by the human inspectors. So with a certain size of the crack or certain length of the crack, the probability is increasing. And that starts with something roughly at 400, 500 milli, uh, millimeter crack lengths to be safely detected by the operators. That means small defects are not 100% safe detected by the operators. So if a company is looking for small defects, a typical human inspector can hardly find the small defects. Next one is the operator who is inspecting manually the material. The is a matter of inspection time. At the beginning when the operator starts to detect or to check the material manually, he finds easily 90% of defects. So probability of detection at the beginning of a human inspection is roughly 90 to 100%, depends on the complexity of the inspection task. But after a certain time, 20, 30, 40 minutes, the probability of detection is decreasing. The operator gets tired. The automatic inspection will not decrease. It's always the inspecting with the same accuracy. So operators have usually a certain time curve. At the beginning, they're detecting more. And after a certain time, the probability of detection is decreasing. And one step more, it's a matter of who is inspecting. So, here is an example of uh, having 11 different operators for a human inspection. And the search success goes from 0% to 100%. Yeah? And so we have one operator which is detecting with 30% safe all the defects. And this is a low, lower trained, not so perfect trained operator, yeah? lower level operator. He's not taking the inspection pretty high responsible. But on the other hand, we have operators here at 70%. They are inspecting with a high accuracy and they are detecting more. And so we got a curve, a distribution of the operator success depending on the operators. Yeah? And usually in the middle, we have an average of four operators which have a 50% detection rate uh, of uh, search success for defects, which is the average. So we have lower trained and higher trained operators, and so we got a certain distribution of the inspection success depending on the operators. And it gets even worse with the manual inspection. So if I have a uh, material which is easy to be inspect if the defect is big enough and if there is not such a complex kind of defect on the surface the operators can easily detect it but let's see if we have for example two three four layers of coating on a material so as the material is getting more complex the defect is getting more complex it's getting more and more worse for the operators to find the defects so the product complexity 
is also a matter that has to be taken account if I have a human inspection. If it's a very easy product with very easy to detect local defects on that material, it can be human inspected. But if the product is getting more complex, the defects on the product is getting more complex, means the human inspection getting more worse. So material and or product complexity and is a matter of detection. So a lot of different factors are influencing the human inspection. So not only the time, the different kinds of operators. So this is a list which gives you an idea about char characteristics of a manual inspection. So the task, so how often comes a defect up, defect rate, which kind of defects, defect types, defect silence, defect location, complexity, standards, overlays, automation. So all these tasks of inspection are influencing the result of human inspection. And the individual operator um, factors like gender or age, time in job, experience yeah, is influencing the result of human inspection. Also the envir environmental conditions like lighting, noise, temperature, how long is the shift, how long is it working, yeah, workplace design and the organization means for example how well is the operator trained and some social factors like isolation, pressure, consultation are influencing the result of human inspection. So, human inspection is a matter of you can do it, but you have to know the limits. Yeah? And human inspection, manual inspection is also a matter what can be detected by the operators. So, if you are starting to inspect something. So if I take for example that sheet and I'm looking for defects on that sheet. It's a Dina 4 square sheet. So um, I'm trying to find some dots or dark dots on it. Yeah? And so if you see that sheets, the human eye has a certain resolution and a certain center of field of view. So in the distance of one meter viewing the typical resolution of the eye is between 300 and 600 micrometer. So that means I see a pixel resolution with my, with my eyes of 300 to 600 micrometer. Yeah? And in a field of view, in a range of 2 centimeters. So I'm scanning that material in 2 centimeters square pixels. And each pixel and, and with a resolution of 300 to 600 micrometer. This is a matter of fact. You can easily see it if you are focusing on a, to detect something. You see mainly a, 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 certain, a small certain area which is 2 to 2 centimeters and all the surrounding is not being inspected because you are focusing on a certain point to detect manually defects on a material surface. So we have a resolution of, yeah, let me say, 4 mm width. And if you're going away at 4 mm width, the detectability is getting worse. This is called peripheral vision of the human eyes. That means you have at the left and right hand side, going away from the focus point, only a peripheral vision, peripheral Vision means you don't see with a high resolution. You see only in the center of the view with a high resolution. That means if you're inspecting something, so here for example, we have a one meter width. CD means cross direction, so this is a material width in one meter. MD means machine direction, so material moves continuously going through, and you're inspecting it, you have an field of view of 20 to 20 millimeters and you're focusing on that point and during the movement of the material the manual inspection is traversive that means you are finding always dots on that material where you are focusing and trying to detect defects and all the rest the red area is not detected 
manually. Only the green points are detected manually. Manual inspection is uh, viewing the material with big gaps. Manual inspection views with big gaps, so if you want to view without gaps, you have to focus on a certain part of the material. So each green rectangular square is an area of 20 to 20 millimeter, and you're, so you're going looking left hand, right hand, left hand, right hand during movement of the material in machine direction, MD direction. All the other area and cross direction, left and right hand from the two bands, is not inspected. So if the material is running with 36 meters per minute on a web width of 1 meter, you see only 4%. These are the two lines where the material is inspected with a high accuracy by the operators. So the material moves along, the operator is viewing the two lines with the green square markers. And so I have a web speed of 36 meters per minute. So to inspect the overall width of 1000 millimeter, what you can do is you can decrease the line speed so the operator has more time to see the overall width. Not only the two bands, he has to see all that material. So to cover the inspection area of 1000 millimeter with a lot of green bands, you have to decrease the web speed to a lower speed and to get a 100% inspection you can run the material with only 1.4 meters per minute. So if you are decreasing the production speed to 1.4 meters per minute, the operators have more time to inspect the overall width, not only two stripes. So 1.4 meters production speed is much more or less compared to the 36 meters, so you are not producing enough material. You are not competitive, so you have to increase the speed. But in that case you need more operators to inspect all that material overall on this on its overall width. So anyway, a hundred percent inspection by operators is more or less impossible. Not only the 20 to 20 millimeter area of the human inspectors as a matter. Also, the brain is only processing a certain amount of images. So we have a matter of fact, we have 20 to 24 images per second which are processed in the human mind. So I got an image width of 20 millimeter, an image length of 20 millimeter, and now I got during material movement I got one image in my mind, second one, third one, fourth one, fifth one, and I have only roughly 20, 24, 25 images per minute which can be processed where I'm able to classify defects on my images. So, then the aforementioned example turns out as follows. I have a cross direction, 1000 millimeter again. I have a machine direction where the material moves with a certain speed. Yeah. The scan distance of the eye is as a 10 millimeter, but the brain processes only 30 millimeter of every image. What happens is I got gaps in between because now the speed of processing the images is lower than this 20 to 20 millimeter speed, which is possibly in the resolution of the eye. Yeah. So I catch up only one track, not, only, not two tracks as before. I got one track and that track has gaps in between. The amount of images is getting less. So additionally I have again to decrease the production speed from before 1.4 meters per minute now to 0.5 meters per minute to get a 100% inspection of all that material. So as a matter of fact the human eye can do an inspection uh, uh, job, a very good one, but not with the 
speed which is needed at the day production processes. Yeah. So, what can be done is, okay, I will start to inspect automatically because cameras are faster than the human eyes and the human mind. So I'm introducing now a camera inspection system. So the operators have time to, in, to, to take care about processes and they, have not take, uh, they must not need time to inspect. Inspection is now done automatically with the inspection system. Yeah. And now I have a possibility to use a camera. And most people know, uh, know the typically matrix camera, so a 16 megapixel matrix camera. Yeah. So this is a camera makes images. So I have here uh, on the left hand side an uh, entire image of 4096 to 4096 pixel matrix camera and on the right hand side I have a typically line scan camera. What is the difference between a matrix camera and a line scan camera? A matrix camera is making images. And after the image is made, the image is analyzed. So, a matrix camera inspection is always an image analysis process. A line scan camera is different working principle. The line scan camera has no matrix. It has a, a, a line of pixels, also in a width of 4096. Can be more, can be less. But here my example, 4096 pixel width. And now the material is continuously moving through the camera which is scanned line by line. And only in case there comes a defect, the line scan camera is detecting something. So on my left hand side you see the bug on the, on the corner. The overall image must be analyzed to find the small bug. So I have 16 megapixel to be analyzed to get an idea where is the defect on my material. Here on my line scan camera, all the pixels are going through and there is no defect. These pixels are not processed. Only if the defect comes up, it's different from the standard signal. So that defect is detected and can be analyzed. So a line scan camera is doing an event analysis. That means events Something happens and the pixel value is not the same as it should be. It's brighter or darker. These are called events because these pixels are these pixel brightness or darkness is being detected. Big advantage is you got a pretty high processing speed because you are analyzing only events and not the overall images. You don't need a, such a high data storage capacity because if you want to store all the big megapixel matrix camera images, you need a very, very huge high amount of data to be stored. On the right hand example for a line scan camera, you have only to save the area of events and not the overall image. And the result of an event camera for a line scan camera by analyzing events is much more faster because the result is ready after processing, after event processing. I have not to wait for the processing of the overall image. So today inspection in a continuous production is a line scan camera because here the system is analyzing events and not the image. The I compare a line scan camera always with a kind of fax machine. The so fax machine means you are putting a material with some information into a fax. The material moves through with a certain machine direction speed. The fax machine is scanning line by line and only these pixels which are getting darker are detected and transmitted to a printer somewhere else where the dark areas are printed out line by line. So a fax machine is a line scan camera inspection system. It's not making an image, it's scanning line by line. And it's transmitting the information line by line.
and only the information which is dark or bright in us is transmitted. So, a lion scan camera, lion scan camera principle, the inspection principle, a lion scan camera principle is comparable to a fax machine, as just explained before. The inspected material is reflecting or transmitting light into a lion scan camera. And the material is then inspected scan line by scan line. And the main components of such an inspection system are the illumination to illuminate the material. We need an encoder, that means we need the information of transportation, how fast goes the material through the scan line. We need some cameras with a line scan sensor and some electronics to process the pixel or event information. So this is a typical inspection principle of a line scan camera. And nowadays, the main task of a line scan camera, the main task of a modern ROE solution is a matter of detectability. So that means what has to be done to find the defect on the surface. And this is a big advantage of the operators because an operator, when he is viewing the material, has one big advantage, he can change the angle of view. So the operator views the surface or views in transmission yeah, or reflection. So if he is trying to find a defect, he is using different optical setups. Perhaps different light intensity, make a light on or off, or different wavelengths using some UV light or some special sensors to find it. So, Manual inspection uses varying inspection setups to detect different kinds of defects. So, he is changing the angle of view. Detectability means in a modern ROE solution, the system has to make the same inspection setups like a human inspector. He has to inspect in reflection and or in transmission using different light sources, using different angles. So if the system is, if the material is complex and the human inspection is complex, also the automatic optical inspection solution will be more complex, using different optical channels, for example, to find the defects on the material. So inspection setups means what we can do is well, what you can do today is you can inspect the material in reflection and or in transmission. If the sensor looks directly into the light source, we are talking a so-called bright field setup. So the camera or the reflected light is directly going into the camera or the transmitted light is direct going into the camera. When you are moving the illumination out of the direct angle, you got a so-called dark field setup. A dark field setup is a different optical setup. That means the light comes from the side and the sensor sees not the direct reflected light, sees only some scattering or some uh, light, some particles scattering light. So depending on the optical setups, we have a bright field or dark field or a reflection or transmission setup. That depends on which kinds of defects should be detected. If you are searching for black spots on a glass sheet, you can easily go in transmissions through the glass. If you want to find some coatings on a surface, coating defects on a surface, it's better to detect in reflection. If you want to find some particles or scratches on the surface, it's better to use a dark field setup. So, depending on the inspection task, the optical setup has to be adapted onto that inspection task. So we can use today different optical channels to detect something. Here are two transmission channels and one dark field channel. For inspection, in transmission usually a contrast channel is used. The contrast channel means the inspection system sees dark defects. So 
if the defect goes through the scan line, something dark signal, gray value, is detected. So the signal on the pixels getting more darker, events are created and detected. This is a typical contrast channel, but that contrast channel is not detecting the deformation on the surface. It only sees the dark dot, which is inside the glass. If you want to see the deformation on the surface, you need a special channel, which is a so-called distortion channel. We are using some, here we are using a special optical setup, some apertures or knife edges in front of camera or illumination to make that optical channel sensitive for the deformation. So that means if the deformation goes into the optical channel, we got a bright dark changing of the signal level because the angle of view is changing by the deformation of the surface. And so we got a special optical setup for to detect deformations on the surfaces. If you want to see particles or scratches on the surface, you need a so-called dark field setup, where you are getting a light on the surface. The light is reflected, but the camera does not look into that light. What happens on the dark field channel? If the scratch or the particle goes through the scan line, that particle is scattering a lot of light, and you got a pretty bright event, bright scattering of light. You know that dark field setup mainly also at home on your TV screen. If you have a lot of dust and dirt on the screen and the sun comes from the side, what happens? You see the dust and dirt as bright particles scattering the sunlight reflected on the surface. This is a dark field setup. These are the different channels. And now, um, when we are using different channels, we are talking at Dr. Sheng today about the so-called multiple image defect analysis. So that means each channel gives a certain information for a defect. So if I have a defect which is only detected in contrast, which is the first column, you see the defect class A gives a dark dot. The defect class A gives no deformation information in the second column. It's the same image as before. And on the third channel, scattering information, I got a little bit of bright signal. Remember the three channels on the slide before. Contrast information, distortion information, and scattering information. And now you got three images of the same defect. One by contrast, one by distortion, and one by scattering. Now the next defect comes up. Second line, defect class B. We got a, again, a contrast information, column one. Column two now, we got a deformation. It's a bright dark signal. And in scattering, it's a big area. Now let me add a third kind of defect, a third one, different one from A to B. I got a defect class C. There is no contrast information. But also no contrast information means there is information. There is no dark area. It's only a deformation in the distortion channel, second column. And no scattering information. So, so more information you get, so more information you receive for a defect, so more safe is the classification. Classification means which kind of defect is it? Is it class A or B? or a C. It's the same as for human inspector. If he is detecting something and he cannot decide what it is, he is trying to find it in transmission or in reflection. And then he is catching up more and more information about the same defect to decide what is it. That means we are talking about a multiple image defect analysis. We want to see want to get more information about the same defect to have a more safe and more correct decision which kind of defect do I have. So more complex a product is, so more channels are needed. So more complex a defect is, so more channels are needed. So, how to specify an inspection solution 
So this is a, the, the recommended inspection solution today is a result of detection capabilities. I have to detect something. And not only the local defects, also the homogeneity, reflection behavior, transmission behavior is perhaps from interest. So I need detection capabilities and some monitoring and measurement features. After that, I need some classification capabilities. That means if I have something detected, what kind of defect is it? It has to be classified or perhaps also separated between class A and B. So not only the detection, also the classification is important. And after that, the qualification. That means is that material still good or not? Amount of defects, high, low, size of defect, we're talking about severity. How severe is a defect? If it's only a small scratch, the material is still good. If the scratch is getting bigger and bigger, more severe, the material is getting worse. So, an inspection system is today a matter of detection, classification and qualification. This is this, uh, specifying the today inspection solution. For qualification, usually a company has a specification which is specifying what is a good or bad material. When we are talking about detection, we have just discussed it. So first of all, we need a camera. A camera needs a certain resolution and the ability to detect something. It can be only as good as the light is. If the illumination is worse, you can use the best camera of the world, but you will never detect something. So the illumination must fit to the camera. And you need a certain optical setup. You have to detect it in reflection, transmission, dark field, whatever, to detect something. So detection capability is a function of camera, illumination and optical setup. And then you are able to find defects on materials, like these examples here, where we got insects or some coating defects, some pinholes on a coating, lamination defects or scratches on the material. And here in the center of this um, overview, you will find also a dark field setup, particles. You will find dark uh, particles on a material, dark field setup. If there is no defect, the area is dark. If a particle comes up, you will find bright dots on it. So this is a particle. And so you will find different kinds of defects depending on the optical setup, on the light or camera which is used. And so defects can be classified according to the defect informations like darkness, brightness and which optical channel is used to detect something. So um, there was the main topic was before was uh, now to specify the inspection systems and now I want to give you some examples where inspection is today used. So this is a typical inspection for plastic film, an easy one which is using two optical channels. One channel is a reflection channel in bright field and the second channel is a, a transmission channel in bright field. So two optical channels are inspecting the material and trying to catch up defects. What's the reason behind using two channels? Because um, we want to find on the surface some spots or also some pinholes and so we have a reflection channel and a transmission is to, defined, uh, to, to find gels or plastic defects in the plastic film. Usually here we are working with a resolution of 50 micrometer in cross and in machine direction and we have a very low speed 10 meters per minute on a 1.1 meter film width. And detecting coating defects on plastic films, coating pinholes or uh, coating um, dark dots in coatings or something like that, unmelted coatings. 
So these are typically uh, defects in plastic films. Next application would be photovoltaic module inspection. Here we have also a reflection bright field from bottom and top side and we have a dark field setup to define also some scratches or particles on the surfaces. And we're using also transmission in bright field. Z resolution is much more, it has now uh, 0.065 millimeter and uh, works with a speed of 20 meters per minute. This inspection system is now for sheet material, yeah? not for continuous. This is inspecting modules on a size of uh, 1 meter width and 1.5 meter length, for example. Could be glass, could be coated glass, could be scribed glasses. These are special thin film modules where we have some scribes and we are looking, we are searching mainly for defects on the scribes or some coating defects during the production process of, for example, zinc oxide coating. Also, this is one uh, inspection system to detect defects on glasses, coated glasses. So, this glass uh, is coated with um, some reflective layers to save energy or to make it more uh, nicer to view. With a, uh, with, a light, with a slightly reflective coating on it and these glass sheets, sheets with 3.2 meter widths are going to a sputter before they are inspected in reflection dark field and reflection bright field searching for coating defects which comes from the sputter coating pinholes with a resolution of 0.05 millimeter. So here we are detecting the coating on the surface of a glass sheet. So, how to combine? So, example before said, so we have an inspection in a reflection, bright field, and we need one inspection, dark field. All both channels in a reflection. So usually you need to have two banks of camera. One bank of camera is responsible for the reflection bright field and a second one is responsible for reflection dark field. At Dr. Schenk Techniques you can combine it. You can combine it. You have to combine the bright field and dark field setup into one bank of cameras. You have only to synchronize the light on and off with the scanning of the camera. So at Dr. Schenk, we are combining the systems in one and are using only one bank of camera. And now you are multiplexing or synchronizing between reflection bright field illumination and reflection dark field illumination. You are switching on and off that light. And so the camera gets one scan bright field, next scan dark field, scan bright field, scan dark field. So we got two scans in one camera. And so we are saving space, we are saving money because we are using one bank of camera for two inspection channels. This, is, this technique at Dr. Schenk is called MIDA, Multiple Image Defect Analysis. We are combining the inspection channels, so we got one, two, perhaps three, four channels. And so we are using this material and this optical setup to be, in, that material is inspected with several optical channels now. It's a combination of bright field and dark field illumination. So, again, uh, inspection of glasses means you're searching for defects in reflection bright field, reflection dark field. And now you want to also measure the reflection behavior of the light going into the camera. 
talking about the reflection homogeneity. So how homogene is the surface of coating? You want to avoid that some sheets have, for example, a higher or lower reflection behavior. Because if you are exchanging some glass sheets on a front of an office building, the reflection behavior must be always the same. So it's not only a matter of local defects, is there a scratch or a bubble or coating defects. Also the homogeneity of the sheet is important to be monitored. Is there a change in the reflection behavior over a certain time? That means the Dr. Schenk is additionally to the local defects able to measure the light intensity which is reflected or transmitted during inspection. And so we got a good impression or feeling how is the coating behavior characteristic of the material. Is it higher or lower? Is there a changing in the coating on one sheet? We are talking about the so-called monitoring of the reflection or transmission layer thicknesses to see if we have a changing in the reflection or transmission behavior during a process. Here are some examples. So you see, for example, left-hand side, uh, side of the sheet, the uh, where the yellow line, yellow-green line is, we have a higher intensity of, um, of reflection. The gray value is higher. Where the blue right-hand side, we have a lower gray value. So that means it's more darker. Less light is reflected compared to the left-hand side. And so you will have an inhomogeneity from the left-hand side of the sheet to the right-hand side of the sheet. So this is layer homogeneity with a lower resolution compared to the local defect detection. So, one example more is typically production of a float glass. Float glass means the sand is melted, glass is produced continuously, so float glass is a roll-to-roll -roll process, let me say, and means it's a continuous process where the melted glass has a certain thickness uh, standard is 4 millimeter glass and this glass is detected in transmission contrast and transmission deformation to find bubbles, to find stones inside the glass with sometimes high resolution of 50 micrometer, sometimes the resolution is 100 micrometer. That depends a little bit on the kind of glass which is produced with a certain width of 4.6 meter. Typically float glass is a 4 millimeter thickness. And here we have, we are using two channels in one. We are using a so-called twin line, where we have one channel in transmission to detect the contrast. So it means the core of a defect. And the second channel, which has a certain aperture in front with a blue light, to detect the deformations or distortion of a defect, for example, to see the deformation of the glass uh, produced by a bubble. So also combining of both channels into one illumination camera setup allows you to save space and money because you need one optical channel and you got two optical channel informations. Twin line is two illuminations in one and we have one camera which is multiplexing between contrast and distortion. Again, here is this principle where we have the contrast detecting only the dark contrast part and the distortion is detecting the deformation of the glass sheet is a bright dark signal and so I got, I detect the deformation of the glasses here in that case. So, detection is a matter of different optical channels, combining it reflection, transmission, bright field, dark field, top side inspection, bottom side inspection, deformation and all those things. So one example is to, for a higher speed, biaxial orientated 
a plastic film, BOPP, which is inspected usually in transmission using also the twin line principles. Two channels, one for contrast, one for the deformation to have a better separation and class classification capability of defects in the plastic film. And now, with a pretty much high speed, we are working on 500 meters per minute, where the line runs on, uh, with a speed of 500 meters per minute and the width of the material is 8 meters. Main reason to be inspected is to detect defects like oil stains, wrinkles or gels or unmelted poly uh, plastics in that film during production. It's an extruded material and these defects has to be inspected on a very, very high production speed. That leads to a discussion of a scan speed. So how fast can an inspection system run with a certain resolution? When we are talking about a line speed of 500 meters per minute, we are working on a speed of 8,333 millimeters per second. When I have a resolution of 100 micrometer, that means we want to inspect 0.1 millimeter in machine direction. So we need a machine direction resolution of 0.1 millimeter. A single scan must have a pixel length of 100 micrometer. This MD resolution called here is 0.1 meter, millimeter, sorry, is a function of, first of all, line speed and second, scan frequency. Line speed is fixed. We have 8,333 millimeters per second where the material moves through the scan line. And the second uh, thing is the scan frequency. So how fast is the line read it out during the material moves through. This is, uh, um, the unit is called frequency one per second, scans per second. So how fast is the scan frequency to get a resolution of 100 micrometer on a given speed of 8,333 millimeters per second. So the scan frequency is a function of the line speed divided by the resolution. So we need a speed of 83,333 scans per second, which is um, on a scan width of 4,096 4, pixels. So we got a scan frequency of the camera scan line on the given width of 4096 pixels of 341 megahertz. So we got 341 million pixels per second, which is now a speed of 83,333 uh, 83, scan lines per second means scans per second on a one scan line. So during one second, the scan line camera guts 83,000 scans. And each scan has a length of 0.1 millimeter, which is pretty much fast. So, so high as the production speed is, so faster must the camera run with a certain scan frequency to get a certain resolution in machine direction. So, I have just given you some examples of high and low speed inspection of uh, more dif using different channels, introducing the meter principles. Um, the state of the art inspection is mainly um, can be can be explained uh, easily when when you are talking about the TFT glass inspection system of today. So, TFT glass inspection is combining different optical channels to get an overall information about the glass quality, which is processed to a TFT screen later on. So, it's an incoming quality control of the glass 
before it is produced to a so-called TFT panel. And here on such inspection systems, the companies are using different optical channels to catch up different informations of the glass quality. The first inspection step is a so-called particle detection. So the glass sheet, which could be 2.5 meter width, 2.3 meter length, is going through a washer before it is inspected. Because on a glass sheet, particles are not allowed. So the, all the particles have to be washed off. To get information about the washing process, after the washing process, a particle detector comes to see how many particles are still remaining on the glass. So we are counting particles on the surface. The next step is the edges of the glass sheets are polished and has a certain um, geometry and they are not allowed any cracks on the edges of the glass. So the glass edge has to be specially detected by a glass edge sensor. After that, the glass goes in a defect inspection and now we are searching on the glass for bubbles or stones inside the glass on a defect inspection system on the overall glass surface. And because the defects are so small and difficult to make a good classification, it can be detected, but the defect is sometimes only detected by two or three pixels and then it is hardly possible to make a good classification. What happens is these defects are additionally inspected on a review station means a microscope head is moving on a certain position where the glass defect is detected and got a new image, an additional image with a higher resolution to make a better, better classification result. So these different inspection steps in one line are combined together now. And after that, the quality of the glass sheet is specified by particles, by glass edge quality, by glass defects and by getting information of the review channel. So we have one, two, three, four different inspection steps where the edge is inspected in two steps. One is the top and bottom edge and the second one is the edge inspection on the lead in and lead out edge. So this is typically an a TFT glass inspection principle detecting particles, detecting local defects with transmission, detecting the edge quality with edge sensors and reviewing defects which are detected on the inspection step before. So to show up such a line I have a short movie. This is a typically TFT glass inspection uh, system where Huge glass sheets of a thickness of 0.5 millimeters are inspected. First of all, you see here the edge sensor, which is detecting the bottom side of the edge for edge defects coming on the bottom side of the glass edge. The sensor looks for cracks and after that, here again the sensor, so the glass goes through the edge sensor here on the bottom side and there is an additional sensor on the top side which is also detecting the edge on the top side. So we got an edge detection. After the edge detection, the sheet goes through the inspection channel, where the glass surface and the overall glass, the entire glass is inspected for deformation and contrast defects in the glass with camera setups. So each camera has a certain scan width. And so we have a certain amount of cameras, put it together and each camera catches up a certain inspection width and the glass goes through, it's illuminated in transmission and I find the defects by using the cameras, the line scan cameras to detect the glass defects in contrast and deformation. When a defect is detected in the inspection channel, the glass is going on the next step where the microscope head is here is a microscope station. So the information of the position of the defect comes from the inspection step. And now the 
Here is the lead in, lead out inspection. And now on that step, you see microscope station again. There must be one image. Here is the inspection of the lead in, lead out edge again. First of all, this edge is detected. And then the microscope step comes. The glass moves to the microscope station. And here the microscope head is moving on a certain position where the defect is located and we got a certain image on that defect where we have detected by the inspection step. And then the glass is ready inspected, goes out. So we got the edge information, we got the particle information, inspection result, microscope review. According to that information, the defects are classified and the sheet is qualified. Principle of inspection. Here again the microscope step. And the lead out edge again is detected by a lead out sensor. Inspection step in transmission now with the light on. Two channels in one meter principle to get contrast and deformation. Edge sensor inspecting the lead in edge. Here a little bit more detailed. The second camera is inspecting the lead out edge if there's a glass before. Microscope station to inspect with a high resolution the defects which are detected before. Here is the lead out edge detection. Sensor moves down and inspecting the lead out edge. So the art of inspection is TFT glass inspection and that was the example which leads me now into the clean for yield project. So I want to explain a little bit more the tasks within the project clean for yield, where Dr. Schenk is responsible for detection of defects. And we have different tasks in the project. So we, are, uh, we have to detect particles in a size of 10, to five, uh, 10 micrometer uh, down to 500 nanometers, finding mechanical defects on the glasses, scratches, cracks. Doing some uh, finding some coating defects, the material, row to row process is coated and we want to see also the layer thickness variation, the homogeneity as we have discussed before, how is a uh, reflection behavior uh, explaining the layer thickness, is there a relation in reflection behavior to the layer thicknesses. So we need some different optical principles and setups to solve these inspection tasks to find the different types of defects on that material. Dr. Schenk is using a camera-based particle counter to find especially the small particles, one micrometer, 500 nanometer, two micrometer defects. These particles are detected with a special camera. I will talk about the CMOS TDI camera later on, explain that principles. For particles smaller than 10 micrometer to find these defects. Additionally, we are using a camera-based inspection solution with a CMOS camera with a so-called dual line sensor where we are detecting particles with a size more than 10 micrometer, finding coating defects and also looking for layer thickness variations in reflection. So these are the inspection tasks. Find small particles with a particle counter. With an, with an additional optical setup, we are doing the reflection transmission inspection to find big particles and to find the layer homogeneity. So these are the tasks. We have a particle counter. The optical principle is a dark field setup. So we need a lot of light and if a particle, a small particle is detected, that particle will scatter light and the inspection system, the particle counter, will detect the scattered light on the surface. 
For that one, we are using a TDI camera with 256 scan lines, a so-called CMOS sensor. The camera-based inspection system is, uh, or the optical principle, is a bright field setup in reflection and transmission. We are using here the meter principle, multiple image defect analysis in reflection and transmission to save money and to get the reflection and transmission information together in one bank of camera. The particle counter working principle is principally the same as a standard line scan camera. We had neither camera. That camera needs a certain autofocus system because the depth of focus on a particle counter is very low. So we need to focus on the back and on the front side. And so we have a particle counter detecting particles on back and front side. And for that use, we need an autofocus unit. Then we need an illumination to get the scattered light. And we need a light trap to avoid uh, scattering of light outside the glass, the inspection area. Particles are detected and then we have a certain particle contamination and the system has to evaluate the particle counter images and this is the matter of particle detection. Again, working principle is the scattering light intensity. Rayleigh scattering uh, means so, more, so bigger the size of a particle is, so more light is scattered by the particle. So the light intensity is increasing. Um, small particles are scattering less light, big particles are scattering more light. So to get a calculation about the size of a particle, the camera has only to calculate the scattered light intensity on these different pixels. So bigger the, the, the particle is, so more light is scattered. So the scattered light intensity corresponds directly with the particle size. The, light, the scattered light intensity is low. So that means we need a certain principle to increase the sensitivity of the sensor. Usually a line scan camera has one or two lines together. And they're working together as a principle. The sensor for a particle detector here for the clean for yield is using 256 lines, each line after the next one. And these lines are integrating the light which is scattered during movement. So it means if a, scan, if a sensor has detected one on one line a defect, a scattering defect, the next line and the next line, the over next line, all the lines are integrating step by step the signals together. And so we got a higher intensity of measured light on a 256 lines. So you can easily see that principle on that slide here. If I have only one scan line, a defect is detected with a low contrast, only a little bit of image. If I have more lines and we are integrating the light together, TDI means time delayed integration, the contrast of the defect is increased. And now we are integrating with 256 lines, so we got a very high signal to noise ratio relation and a very high intensity for scattering of light. This is the principle of the TDI camera. So the object, so the defect, the scattering light defect moves from right to left and the TDI sensor is increasing by line by line the intensity of the, of the scattered light. So we get a higher sensitivity compared to a single or dual line sensor. Additionally to the high sensitive 256 line dual uh, uh, scan line sensor, TDI sensor, we need an autofocus. The autofocus is responsible to have the focusing level of the optics directly on the top or on the bottom side. So if you want, if you want to discriminate between particles on bottom and top side, you need an autofocusing unit to see whether a defect is located top or bottom on the glass side. So that autofocus principle can be active or passive. And uh, Dr. Schenk is using an active uh, autofocusing unit that means a light is going to the surface, is reflected to a sensor, and 
with respect to the distance of the uh, of the reflected light the focusing unit going is focusing on the front or on the bottom side of the glass you need that focusing unit because the glass during inspection is always moving a little bit uh, back and forth and there is also a little bit vibration and the flexible film in a row to roll production is moving up and down and so we have always to focus on the correct position. For that reason a particle detector has a focusing unit to focus the sensor on the correct position. Additionally I need a high illumination to create the light. All the Dr. Schenk illuminations nowadays are LED illuminations water cooled to stabilize the temperature and to increase the lifetime, has some certain lenses on the surface and usually we are using a white light because they have a high intensity today. And um, additionally to the light, to the illumination, we need a light trap to avoid uh, unwanted reflections outside of the inspection areas. Yeah. No unwanted scattering effects, no unwanted reflections and a defined background of the system. For that reason, a so-called light trap is used. So, 256-line TDI cameras, an autofocus sensor, illumination and light trap, and so you have built it up a particle counter. And that particle counter is now detecting pretty much small particles by the uh, scattered light intensity. So this is a typically image of a particle of one, two, three, four particles detected on a sheet, on a glass sheet. And the defect size is not the particle size as is displayed here in the image. It's a matter of the light intensity. So so brighter the dot is, so bigger is the particle. So um, the particles are scattering the light and creating an intensity of light and how to calibrate charge a system to decide whether it's a small or a medium or a big particle. For calibration um, artificial contaminations with a specific size are used. So we are using for calibration polystyrene latex spheres. Um, has a certain size with one micrometer, 500 nanometer or two micrometer. And so you're mixing these latex spheres in a liquid solution and then you're spraying these alcohol solution with the particles with a specific size on a glass surface. And then you are measuring the light intensity scattered by the one micrometer particle 500 nanometer particles or 2 micrometer uh, particles and so you see how much light is scattered and then you have a calibration according to set polystyrene latex spheres PSL cords reference particles. First of all when you are using a liquid you have to be on the safe side that the liquid itself is not creating some scattering of light. Here is the clean glass and now we are using the clean glass with a dispersed solution without any particles. You see the signal level is the same. So the liquid where the particles are inside are not influencing the signal. And after that you can put some particles into the liquid and you can view the particles in a microscope. Here is on the left hand side is the microscope image in bright field with small particles where you can see the small particles all with the same size. These are the polystyrene latex spheres. And the particle counter image gives now bright dots for each particle on it. And that bright dot in the intensity, five micrometer particles, is a matter of how big is the particle. Yeah. Here is a microscope image in dark field now. On the right hand side you see one micrometer particles on the particle counter and the intensity is small. It's a very small particle and so we have 
a low scattered light intensity. And all the particles, one, two, three, four, five particles, has the same light intensity of the scattered light. And so these are all one micrometer particles. And we see, and now Dr. Schenk is measuring the intensity of the of the uh, of the pixels, the gray values of the pixels, and with, if it's more brighter, the particle is getting bigger. So this is the uh, way how to calibrate the system. And here you can see um, the images of one micrometer particles, 500 nanometer particles, and 300 nanometer particles. The gray value, the intensity of light is increasing for the one micrometer is the highest level, 500 micrometer uh, nanometer it's getting lower, and 300 nanometer it's getting lower again. And here on the gray images you see the bright, medium, and low intense particles on a particle detector. Differentiation of bottom and top side particle, we are using the autofocus unit. So if we find a particle, we can focus on the top or on the bottom side. And by uh, getting two images, one on top and one on bottom side, we can differentiate whether a particle is located on the top or a particle is located on the bottom surface by analyzing the images. So that's the principle. So the light intensity gives the size of the particle. And the focusing unit, by focusing on top and bottom side, gives the information where is the particle located. Huh? Now, the particles are detected, and we can gather information about the washing and cleaning process before uh, doing a coating on it. So we have the camera-based particle counter, and after the particle counter, the coating comes. And now the coating has to be checked in a camera-based inspection system in reflection and transmission, second inspection step now. And now we want to see the optical uh, reflection and transmission behavior, again with the meter principle, multiplexed illuminations in reflection and transmission into one camera bank to see defects on the surface or in the material. For that reason, we are using a camera-based inspection system to detect big particles, mechanical defects, and to see also differences in the layer thickness variations. So, um, main differences to the particle counter are now the depth of focus. So we have not to focus on the bottom and top side. The focusing depth of the camera-based system is much more bigger compared to the particle counter. We are using a dual line scan camera and the um, types of detected defects are different. So big particles compared to the small particles now. The opti optical resolution is different to the particle counter. We are looking for big defects now. This is a two camera system in reflection and transmission. Here you see the red one is the light going in reflection to the surface, is reflected into two cameras, and the green one is the transmission. And we are inspecting a 300 material width in the, within the Clean for Yield project in bright field, one channel in transmission and one in reflection. In reflection, we are using a four color illumination to get a homogeneity of the layer to get an idea about the um, layer thickness by monitoring the reflection intensity. Also, these illuminations are water cooled to stabilize the temperature. These are typically defects in transmission and reflection with a little bit higher resolution as we are using it for clean for yield, but gives you an idea about typically coating defects which occurs on a coating process um, in a transmission and in a reflection channel. The reflection channel is additionally responsible to get information about the layer homogeneity in reflection layer thickness. Homogeneity map gives an idea about the reflection behavior 
and the homogeneity or thickness of the layer is monitored. So by using different wavelengths, 470 nanometer or 530 nanometers, I got different intensities in reflection behavior. So the light source, the light wavelengths, is creating different um, reflection intensities. So by using more different angles, uh, more different wavelengths of light, we got different informations of reflection behavior to, to calculate a re uh, relation for thickness of a layer by so-called homogeneity maps. The homogeneity map itself is a, a map which is averaged to get rid of small local defects and this homogeneity map has a very low noise, only 0.2% noise compared to the gray image noise of 3%. And the homogeneity map has a very high gray image range of 16 bit, which is 65,536 gray values. Usually for local defects, we are using an 8 bit, which is 256 gray values only. This is for local defects. For homogeneity, we are using a much more higher range of the gray values within a 16-bit image. So when you are using only one uh, light source with one wavelength, we got a certain reflection behavior. And this is a sinus line. So the layer thickness is going from 2.8 to 3.2 micrometer, and the reflection is going up and down and up and down. We got a certain curve, which gives you an idea about uh, light wavelengths of 470 nanometer. With that curve, it's difficult to decide what thickness do I have. If I have a, let me say, 8% reflection behavior, I have one, two, three, four, five different points in the diagram where, where the sickness is related. So how to improve it? Yeah, here you see the one, two, three, four, five points. How to improve it? We are using different wavelengths here in that diagram, a wavelength 470 nanometer, 530 and 630. And now with the different wavelengths, we got also curves for reflection behavior by by combining the three lines together, we got a second uh, level approach with a much more higher range of validity um, for the sickness calculation within C reflection behavior. And now we have a simulation of the layer stack with optional properties n and k values, sickness values, and we are using algorithm to calculate the sickness out of the result of three different intensities or by using different wavelengths, four, sorry. Four color illumination, four reflection intensities gives you information about the thickness of the layer. So thanks to thanks to the researching leading the research leading to these results has receiving founding from the European Union's seventh framework program and worked together in the Clean for Yield project by using um, making detection for particles, doing a thickness algorithm on the homogeneity, finding local defects on a material to improve the roll-to-roll -roll production process for OLEDs or for organic photovoltaic modules, films. That was the inspection tasks and yeah, it was a, also a great experience for Dr. Schenk, thanks to all the people. <laughs>